Hi hey guys, I'm Nankisho Swami and in today's tutorial we would be learning about uh, uh, debugging and diagnostics of an automation project that is built on OpenSpan or Pega Robotic. Basically both are same. Uh, and for this particular tutorial we would be using the project that we built in our previous tutorial uh, wherein uh, we just uh, open up a calculator application, press two buttons and show the results uh, of uh, those uh, two buttons added result on uh, Windows uh, Home application. So let's get started. So let's, uh, uh, there uh, was a bug uh, while uh, it pops up the calculator application and then it automatically starts the uh, calculator application. So to fix that bug or that problem, you can do one thing, run the application manually, then right click on your status bar and go to start task manager. Go to application. Select your calculator application or the application that you're trying to interrogate and choose go to process. Once you are there in the process, again right click and choose open file location. And you need to copy this particular location or this exe file. Just choose copy. Close your folder, go back, close your task manager, go back to the uh, application's uh, path property. Just make sure you have selected the application here and go to the path property. Open this window and paste it. So it will point to the right EXE. That issue uh, wherein when you click on the start interrogation button, it pops up the application and automatically stop the interrogation. That issue just uh, comes if you don't point the uh, uh, correct exe file in the path uh, property. So when you uh, select the correct exe file, your issue would be automatically fixed. So now all about uh, debugging. Uh, so for the debugging, you can go to the debugging option or the menu on the top and you can find there are multiple options to debug an application. You can start debugging by pressing F5. You can start the application without uh, debugging if you press Ctrl F5. You can also start this particular process of automation by attaching this to the different process. So if you select it, it will show all the running process on this particular system and you can attach that particular uh, uh, automation to one of the running uh, process. And the next one is uh, step into, by pressing F11, you can step into uh, one particular uh, automation steps and similarly you can use step over if you want to step over one particular module let's uh, and if you want to use the breakpoint and the uh, output and uh, immediate windows these are options. these are the all option if uh, application is not running uh, and similarly, if you run the application, let's see what all options are available. So while application is running, you can see the options are changed here. You can see the break call. You can see the stop debugging, deattach all processes, terminate all. And similarly, you can find here the multiple windows. Windows options are increased. And now, now we will take the uh, debugging option one by one. So while debugging, uh, if you want to step or 
uh, stop the process on one particular point, then you need to add a breakpoint. So to add a breakpoint, wherever you like to add a breakpoint, just right click on the particular process flow. So as I said in the previous tutorial, that here, yellow lines indicate about the process flow and the blue lines indicate about the data flow. So just highlight any of the process flow wherever, wherever you want to add a breakpoint and right click and choose toggle breakpoint. So when you run it, when you run the uh, particular process, it will break, uh, stop at the breakpoint. And similarly, so let's uh, let's run this automation by clicking on the start automation button. So you see, it has automatically stopped here. Now, if you want to step, uh, run the automation by step by step, then you can press F11. See, and if you're step over then you can press the step. Similarly if you add a, a watch to see what data one uh, of the automation uh, component has then you can add a watch. And once you add a watch you can see those values under automation watch window and to act uh, to show that automation watch window you can click on the debug windows and automation watches and similarly you can also see the automation um, values in automation locals so in the automation locals it will show all the components uh, values and in the watch window you, you can see the components that you add to the watch here. So we added these two. I click add watch and similarly right click and add watch. So it will show the watch values or the components those were added to the watch in uh, automation watch window here. So let's step into by pressing F11. So you see the values are changing in that is uh, the tax property, this particular property here. So when you press 4, it was 4 and it was showing the 4 here. When you press 5, that time it was 5 and it was showing 5 here. And now it added and uh, showing the uh, output result as 9, that is you can see here. Similar. And if you want to just see the uh, value of uh, um, of a particular component, then you can just mouse over on the data property and you can see here, yeah, property. This is all about uh, debugging an, an application. You can use F5, then you can uh, you, uh, add a breakpoint by right clicking on any of the process and choose toggle breakpoint. Then you can use F11 to step by step running an automation process and you can also use F10 to step over. And similarly to add a automation watch, just right click on any data flow and choose add watch and to see the watch values you need to go to debug, windows and automation watch. And you want to see all the components values, then you can choose automation uh, uh, locals. And to remove a breakpoint, you can similarly right click and choose delete. Also, you can go to debug and deattach all the breakpoints. And all uh, the other way, you can go to the breakpoint window here and you can choose delete or all the breakpoints or if you want to uh, delete a particular breakpoint then just uncheck and if you want to automation not to stop on the breakpoint you can either disable or delete.
So these are the options available for debugging and automation project. And uh, similarly, if you want to uh, add some log files to diagnostic uh, an application while running in the live environment, then you can go to the tool, options, and go to the Pedro Robotic. If you're using OpenSpan, then it would be OpenSpan here. And choose the Studio Diagnostic. So these are the values those are going to log into the uh, log files. So you can change what type of information you want to log, either in error, warning, or info, or you want to off that information. This is uh, while debugging in uh, in uh, studio. And if you want to log the information on runtime, then you can go to the runtime diagnostics and go to log category. It will also show the similar kind of information, and you can then change it. Yeah. And while debugging an application, you can also use to try and catch. And to add a try catch, let me stop the application. You can see this tiny button here. So to add the try catch in one particular block, say for example, we want to add a try catch here. Here at the end. So and Gonna add a catch, then click on catch and here catch the exception. And do whatever you want to do. Add the exception. You can show a massive box or anything like that. And under the exception, exception would be in these kind of events. If this is a system exception, you can choose to handle it on a system exception on the open span or the network or MS domain, Microsoft, or these type of exception you can individually handle. So by default it is system. So this is about try catch. And so these are the options available uh, to debug an application. On uh, Visual uh, on the Visual Studio or uh, OpenStan Studio or a Pega Robotics Studio, uh, Studio, and similarly you can uh, use Runtime Diagnostic to log all the errors uh, in case your application encounters an error. And uh, there is another option you can use. If you don't want to stop your application on error, then just uh, choose this suppress error to true. So it will jump over the error and process the next one. So